Oppenheimer comes after Christopher Nolan's time-bending film Tenet, which was a setback in the otherwise stellar career the filmmaker has had. The title character is about a real-life man who gave us the power to destroy ourselves 20 times over with the first nuclear weapon. The Oppenheimer trailer promises a high-powered, performance-based drama where all the action will be in the interaction with other characters within the situation they find themselves in. Not exactly summer tent pole stuff, but I for sure welcome this change of pace. Don't get me wrong, these testicles love spectacles. But the more Marvel movies we get, the more it feels like we move away from telling human stories and more showing off what Hollywood computers can do. Oppenheimer's trailer can be broken down into three parts. The quest to recruit scientists into building the first atomic weapon, the unknown about said weapon's possibilities, and the implications and aftermath when Oppenheimer knows the weapon can work. It begs the question while watching the trailer, how will Nolan's Oppenheimer separate itself from the 1989 film Fat Man and Little Boy, a mid-tier film starring Paul Newman as General Leslie Groves, pushing Oppenheimer, played by Dwight Schultz, to complete his task, a film which emphasized their tumultuous relationship more than what it meant developing the most destructive weapon the world has ever seen. Flash forward now and Oppenheimer seems to emphasize the weight of the world on one man's shoulders, fully understanding that if he doesn't develop the destructive weapon first, someone else will and is. And that someone else being the Nazis. Springtime for Hitler and Germany. Imagine someone like that with the bomb. So what is one to do when faced with so many unknowns? Oppenheimer doesn't know if his theory is correct. Even worse, he doesn't know that if they test it, it won't start a chain reaction that might blow up the entire world. Complicating matters worse, he has to trust that the people he's working for, in this case the American government, are the good guys. And if the bomb does work, how much responsibility does he bear when hundreds of thousands of people are wiped off the earth in a flash? Complicated questions like that is what Oppenheimer promises to tackle with the trailer. Oppenheimer is now played by Killian Murphy, who looks like he was born to play the part, with his driving force still being Leslie Groves, now played by Matt Damon. Matt Damon! But their relationship seems to be a far less troublesome one and more of a nurturing partnership. The trailer makes you anticipate a high-octane drama, from the recruitment of an eclectic group of scientists including Albert Einstein, to the incomplete understanding of what Oppenheimer is trying to achieve, and finally the self-realization of what exactly Oppenheimer has accomplished. It's shaping out to be a freaking Frankenstein's monster movie. But this time Frankenstein's monster is the atomic bomb and Dr. Frankenstein, or Oppenheimer in this case, slowly becomes aware of what his creation means to the world but presses along anyways. The morality of the piece being, do you continue to build the weapon of sheer horror just because your enemy might do it first? And all of this is cross cut with high speed shots of the Trinity test bomb detonating. High speed shots that are not CGI but practical effects, setting up the audience for one hell of a finale when the bomb test is successful. A countdown is overheard to signify not only the bomb's detonation, but the race against Nazi Germany and Oppenheimer's own self-realization. Make no mistake about it. Christopher Nolan is a shoe in for a Best Director Oscar if he sticks the landing on this film. And God knows the cinema is in dire need of a return to the great drama, with actor performances so powerful you can't tell which is more explosive, them or the atomic bomb itself. I'm out of here.